Not so long ago on the channel, I reviewed the Taro 130 and I deemed it one of the best products that I have received all year and I definitely still stand by that. But a lot of people in the comments were saying, well, what about the 150 and what about the 120? So here we have them both. Now, first of all, I have to say that I don't have as much to say about the 150 as I do the 120 and the reason for that is the 150 is pretty much identical to the 130 except for having a little bit more room here between the propellers and the frame. Other than that the placement of every component is the same and all of the components are the same. So the only thing that I have to say really about the 150 against the 130 is that you have a little bit more space here so if you wanted to say take a Mobius mini camera and mount that up the front you can relax a little bit more when it comes to how much space you've got between the propellers and the camera but the camera will go on both the 150 and the 130 frame so I would say personally perhaps go for the 130 if that doesn't bother you you might save a little bit of weight other than that identical quadcopter. The 120 however that's a completely different story. Now it does have all of the same components as the 130 and the 150 but they have had to completely work the frame to get it to a smaller size. So this is the frame size here and in comparison I have my 120 brushed quadcopter and you can see it really is very small but we have the same 1104 4000 kV motors, we have 6 Ampere SCs, we have got the 300 milliwatt VTX which is 32 channels, we have got the NAS32 flight controller and we also have the same camera up the front as well. But it is considerably smaller, so look at that, that's the 150, it's the 120 and if you put them together like that, quite a bit smaller. But there has been some compromise for that. You see, we could not put a camera on top of there. So, if you're thinking, should I get the 130 or the 120? If you want to stick a camera on it, get the 130. If you want it a little bit lighter, get the 120. And that's pretty much it. This thing is just as fantastic as the 130 and the 150. Now let's just talk about some of those changes that they have made. First of all, you can see that the VTX is positioned underneath here rather than being in the middle of the frame on this one. So they have had to put these legs underneath here as well. And because of that shorter frame on the top, so the propellers just missed that again, the battery has to sit underneath and I have used a battery strap here. This is from Picnic Quads. This isn't the strap that you get in the package. Really one of the only downsides to this. I don't like the tarot straps that you get given with this. So another thing that they have done is use less standoffs. So on the 150 and the 130 they had this standoff here. You can see it's on that side and on this side it got in the way of the flight controller access point so I remove that on this but on this one not there so that's a good thing now another good thing about the 120 is it still fits a full-size X4R SB receiver in it that slots in nicely there I have got the pins going this way and the antennas coming up the top there I've used two cable ties or zip ties and I have put some heat shrink over the top there. It looks a bit daft because the antennas are out of proportion to this. You could stick a much smaller receiver in there and save some weight but this is the one I had lying around. And again the cable ties just missed the propellers so these are three inch propellers the same as all of the other Taro models. And another thing that we've got as well is we've got the antenna which is a dipole antenna again coming through the top here and when I got this it wasn't really coming through the top it was just sort of loose down here so I have pulled it through here and it works much better like that another thing as well that might be a consideration for you is on the 130 and the 150 you can adjust the camera angle so if you like to fly fast forward then you can tilt the camera up but if you want to just do a bit of casual flying around have it flat and you do get some of this frame and shot there but if you get it 
perfect, then you can avoid getting any of the frame and shot. This one, the camera angle is fixed. It's got this plate on here, and it's fixed at an angle, and you do get some of the top of the frame in shot so that might be something to consider as well you can't tip it down and I guess as well you know having the battery underneath as well if you crashed you could maybe do some damage to your battery you could rip these legs off and some damage to the VTX but honestly it flew fantastic and I didn't crash it at all and this thing is really solid it's got like a metal case over the top there and we have got our access points as well to change the channels on the VTX as I say it's 32 channel and it's very powerful so you might be thinking well it could do with a cloverleaf antenna but it doesn't really need it I could get the range of all of my flying fields just with this little pokey antenna out the top here so yeah not a lot more to say another fantastic model from Tarot. Uh, let's see what else you get in the box. So this is the box that it comes in. All of them come in this box. And again, you get similar sort of things with it, except you get a battery plate with this one because it's going to sit underneath. But as I'm not using the stock battery strap here, then I haven't used it. By the way, the battery is the 450 milliamp nanotech battery. You don't get that in the kit. I have had to buy that and it uses a JST to connect to it. You'll get about a four to five minute flight time of that depending how much punch you give it. Again, just like all the other ones really. So you get given this bag of stuff. So let's open this up. And let's see what you get. So we have got this sort of like an FTDI adapter really but that just plugs into the side there it is a four pin JST connector same as the last time and that will just go into the side there and you can configure the flight controller I have put beta flight on there the latest version I'll show you what settings I use but it's basically the same as the 130 and it flew fantastic with those PIDs there so you get given this cable here and this is if you are using a PWM receiver, so individual channels there. And you're also given this for PPM and SBUS as well, so I'm using SBUS. We have a Velcro thing in there, and we also have the tarot strap as well, which I'm not too keen on, but it's a tiny strap, really thin. And you're also given the instructions as well, how to connect it up, so it's really clear. So we have got three ports underneath here. So your one on the right is for your S bus receiver, one in the middle PPM. And this one is for sticking LED kit on. And then down here you have got your PWM if you want to use a PWM one as well. Really nice flight controller, really nice instructions. So before I go into beta flight and uh, show you what my setup is, of course you are going to need some other stuff to get this going. You'll need FPV goggles. I'm using my Fat Shark Dominator V2 goggles with the Menace RC patch antenna and a Onway antenna, and then the Fat Shark Diversity receiver in there. And then you're going to need a radio system, and of course because I'm using the X4 RSB, I'm using the free sky tyrannis and I have set a model up to coincide with that so let's get into beta flight and let's show you how I have set this cool thing up so here we are in beta flight you download this from the Chrome App Store now it does come with clean flight installed on it and I'm not gonna run through how to install Beta flight onto it because I've already done it, but the quadcopter is connected up to its USB dongle. So this is the NAS32 board, so you just go into firmware flasher, select the NAS board there, the latest version of Beta Flight. Don't select any of these reboot sequences, just have the manual board rate at 256, load the firmware online and then flash it and I didn't have any issues with that. I'll put a link in the description 
of a troubleshooting guide for beta flight because there's a lot of connectivity issues when trying to flash beta flight but i do strongly recommend that you use it over clean flight it's much easier to tune that way and it's what i stick to now so you can see up here that it says com3 so i'm going to connect to it and just quickly show you the settings that i've got so it's not on a level surface at the moment but if it was you could calibrate the accelerometer here let's go into ports then we've got just one uart2 which the serial RX is selected for the receiver to work. If we go into configuration here, we've got quad X set up here, one shot one two five up here, and I've got motor stop turned off. So when you arm the quadcopter, the motors will start to spin. Quite a low minimum throttle for this one at one zero three five, and the maximum throttle at two thousand. Minimum command leave at one thousand, of course. Then down here we have RX serial for S bus and then an S bus selected here. And we have VBAT selected here as well because one thing I didn't talk about is the buzzer that is on this quadcopter. So yeah, a big feature for this one. Same as all the other ones, as I say. It's got a low voltage beeper, which is fantastic, but leaving everything as standard here. And all this is just standard too. Got everything turned off down here. Now onto the PIDs here, and they are pretty much identical to the 130. Now as for weight, the 120 with a receiver but no battery weighs 91 grams, and the 150 weighs 100 grams, so only 10 grams between the two, so not a huge difference, and the 130 again sits in the middle somewhere as well of that. So these are the PIDs that I'm using here. I also use 0.8 on the Super 8 and 0 on the RC Expo if you want to copy those settings. The receiver tab, we need TAER for using the SBUS receiver. And in order to connect that up, you need to plug the battery in. So make sure that you've got the props off while testing all this. Under modes, I've got a two position switch under the AUX2 to arm it. And then I've got angle mode on a three position switch and horizon and acro over here somewhere. And then I've also set up a third auxiliary for a beeper so that if it gets lost in long grass, you can flick a switch. And if the battery's still connected, then you can find the model in the long grass, which is very handy this time of year, especially when the field's so muddy. Now, I did calibrate the ESCs here. And I recommend that you do that. Now, they say that they are B. Al Hali ESCs. However, when I tried to connect them up to B. Al Hali Suite, they weren't recognized. So maybe they are a really old firmware. I'm not sure. I didn't really want to mess with them because they were working fine. But if you want to calibrate the ESCs, you have to tick this box here, lift this master up to full, and then plug your battery in. You get the magic tones, and then reduce this to zero, and that'll calibrate your ESCs. Now, I'm in the beginner mode here in BL Halley, so I'm going to tick this and you'll get a couple of other options as well. So you can set your fail safe there, I have got it to drop. But if you want a more in-depth sort of run-through of BL Halley Suite, then check out my cheap quadcopter build that I did recently on the channel. I detail the settings more, I show how to get these minimum commands here by going into the motors tab and finding out when the motors start spinning etc so the next thing to do is go and take it for a fly okay let's go for a takeoff with this one and see what we have got oh, it's looking nice this thing's so tiny let's go for a punch first of all oh that is nice not a bad descent either Okay, try some acro out. Nothing too offensive so far. Not bad. <laughs> this one looks like it's gonna be just as good as the 130. if I can get a close shot of it but the thing's so small I think I might struggle <laughs> those antennas look too big for it really 
I really like this thing. Let's try some more flips. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, does it perfect. Look, this is showing up on the camera. Oh, it's a fast end. Nice slow flip there. And slow roll, if you can see that. Plenty of power with this one, it's not going to be a problem. And just like the 130, I'm expecting a decent flight time too. Probably four to five minute flight time. Really nice. Little bit small for line of sight for doing acro with the orientation. Relying on the propellers really for that. Anyway, let's come in for a landing and let's do some FPV. So here we have the DVR footage and I go for a punch out. And the first thing that you will notice is we have the frame in shot. It's not a deal breaker for me at all. And as you can see, this thing is pretty nicely tuned. So this is a 3S model only. You cannot put a 4S battery on it, but I would say there's plenty of punch there for some intermediate acro. You can see there over the trees, not a problem with the punch at all. I'm not losing power as I'm coming close to the ground. I can always power out. Now, one thing that you may notice, and I certainly can notice it, is there is a little black speck at the bottom left of the screen. And I think that's a little bit of dust or something that has gotten on the sensor. I seem to have a lot of bad luck with these cameras that I get sent. It wasn't on the 130 model, but I recently have been having problems with stuff on the camera as I do a big punch out over the tree. Really nice, could do that with the 130 as well. But yeah, a bit of a quality control issue, I would say, and the lens is glued in. So it might be difficult to remove that lens and get rid of that spec. I know a lot of people will be saying, oh, it's just a small thing, but I have a little bit of OCD when it comes to stuff like that. It just bothers me. But just flying around the field here, doing some nice acro. I really love how this one is set up. Look at that, just really snappy. The same as the 130, as I say, the PIDs are identical to the 130. Just testing out the range here, which is really good, despite having that dipole antenna. You'll see that we have some break up though, and of course that is to be expected. That is what a cloverleaf antenna does. It sort of gets rid of the break up. It deflects this multipathing that we get, but... You can see that it's not causing too much of a problem. Now, when I reviewed the 130, a lot of people said, oh, the camera quality isn't very good. The thing is, I'm so used to these FPV cameras that it doesn't detract from the flying. FPV cameras aren't the best quality anyways. I'm finding that it's a little bit blurry in the background, but I'm used to that with these FPV cameras. They are not HD. Yes, there are... FPV cameras that are a little bit more crisp, but I didn't find that an issue at all. Trying a bit of proximity here through the trees, and of course, I did my brushed and brushless race around here, and surprisingly, the brushed model won, but this is a fantastic machine, this one. And no problems with the props hitting anything at all, and no problems, again, just flying proximity and doing some acro, really like these maneuvers, these quick rolls. Yeah, I have to give a shout out to Gearbest for sending this one in for review and the 150 as well. I don't think you can go wrong with either of them. It's just really regarding your preference, which one you want. I am a little bit disappointed with the quality control on the camera because I didn't have that on the other one. So I guess you have to bear that in mind. And I guess if you were buying this, you could either try and remove that or send it back and complain and get another one, which is what I probably do. But there you go. That is my review 
of the Tarot 120. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.